ICT NCERT presents audio book introductory macroeconomics page 56 module 4 the government budget and the economy module 4.1 government budget rationale the government is an intrinsic part of any economy The basic responsibility of the government of any country is to ensure the welfare of its citizens. A significant aspect of this welfare is economic. To understand how the government can affect the economy, we need to understand its role in the economy. Page 57. Key concepts: government revenue, government expenditure, government deficit. 4.1.1 role of the government defense internal peacekeeping that is ensuring law and order and enforcing law are some of the core functions of any government apart from these the government ensures development of economy which is equitably shared among all the citizens the government has to ensure that no region or group of citizens is excluded from the benefits of development Finally the government also has to ensure that the development process is a steady process and is not interrupted by sharp downturns of the economy the role of the government is outlined in figure 4.1 government has two sets of roles governance role and economic role governance role includes defense internal peace and enforcing law economic role includes ensuring social equity development and economic stability figure 4.1 role of the government here we have a flow chart at the top of the flow chart is the label government from that we have two sub branches one of governance role and the other of economic role the one with governance role is further divided into three sub branches they are defense internal peace and enforcing law economic role is divided into two sub branches ensuring development and ensuring economic stability 4.1.2 government receipts in order to perform its roles the government will necessarily incur expenditure to meet these expenditures the government must generate receipts The government's receipts are classified into revenue receipts and capital receipts. Revenue receipts include proceeds of taxes and other duties levied by the government, interest and dividend on investments made by the government, fees and other receipts for services provided by the government. These are receipts from the government's current transactions or transactions that do not lead to a change in the government's asset holdings page 58 capital receipts on the other hand arise out of a change in the government's asset holdings the government may recover loans that it had given out or sell some asset it has for example a public sector company government receipts are summarized in figure 4.2 figure 4.2 types of government receipts We have here a flow chart which represents how government receipts may be categorized. The sub branches are revenue receipts and capital receipts. Revenue receipts are further bifurcated into two branches, tax revenues and non-tax revenues. Capital receipts are trifurcated into sub branches, recovery of loans, disinvestment, borrowings and other liabilities. Everything that the government receives as revenue and by liquidating any of its assets that is disinvestment they are called the government's non debt receipts as the term implies these are receipts that the government gets without raising any debt non debt receipts equals tax revenues plus non tax revenues plus disinvestment plus recovery of loans alternatively non debt receipts equals revenue receipts plus capital receipts minus borrowings 
and other liabilities. Non-debt receipts are typically not enough to meet all the government's expenditures. The government often has to add to its liabilities to raise its additional receipts. These could be in the form of domestic borrowings, that is, borrowing from its own citizens or international borrowings. Now, let's discuss the major sources of revenue receipts. The major sources of the government revenue are tax revenue and non-tax revenue. Tax revenue is generated from direct taxes and indirect taxes. Non-tax revenue includes fees and charges, profits from government undertakings and interest earnings. The sources are explained in detail in Table 4.1 and are summarized in Figure 4.3. Table 4.1 Sources of Government Revenue Page 59 We have before us a table with two columns and four rows. The first column indicates source of revenue and the second nature. Row 1 Taxes these are compulsory levies by the government on economic agents like an individual or institution. For example, income tax, corporate profits, tax etc. Or on economic transactions for exchange. For example, sales tax, excise tax etc. Taxes are transfers from citizens to the government. Row 2. Fees and Charges these are charges levied by the government for certain services that it provides. For example, stamp duties, registration charges for registering property, etc. Row 3. Profits from government undertakings. Whenever the government undertakes production through public sector enterprises, the profits of these enterprises become a part of the government revenue. Row 4. Interest earnings. These are returns on the principal amount that the government receives while it lends to the public institutions, state governments, etc. Figure 4.3 Sources of Government Revenue We have before us a flowchart which represents the revenue receipts and its various breakup. Revenue receipts is further bifurcated into two sub-branches, tax revenue and non-tax revenue. The tax revenue branch is subdivided into direct taxes and indirect taxes. Non-tax revenue is trifurcated into three sub-branches – fees and charges, profits from government undertakings, interest on lending. Taxes are the most important source of the government revenue. Depending on what is being taxed and in what manner, the taxes may be classified as under direct taxes and indirect taxes. Both direct and indirect taxes are of two types, lump sum taxes and proportional taxes. Figure 4.4 displays the classification of taxes and it is discussed in detail in Table 4.2. Figure 4.4 Taxes as a source of government revenue Page 60 We have before us a flowchart. The topmost label, Taxes, has been divided into two sub-branches, Direct Tax and Indirect Tax. Direct Tax is bifurcated into two branches, Lump Sum Tax, Proportional Tax. Indirect Tax is further subdivided into two branches, Lump Sum Tax, Proportional Tax. Table 4.2 Types of Taxes this table has three columns and five rows. The three columns indicate tax type, nature of tax and give an example. Row 1. Direct tax. These are taxes whose burden is borne by the person on whom the tax is levied. In other words, the burden of the tax cannot be shifted. Income tax, tax on income of individuals, corporate profit tax, Tax on profit of firms are examples of the same. Row 2. Indirect tax. These are taxes whose burden may be shifted by the person on whom the tax is levied to another economic agent. The examples are sales tax, that is tax on value of a sale transaction. This tax is levied on the seller, 
who passes the tax burden on to the buyer by increasing the prices. Excise tax, tax on production. This tax is levied on the producer, who passes the tax burden on to the buyer of the product by increasing its prices. Row 3. Lump sum tax. This is a fixed amount charged as a tax from every individual. For example, entertainment tax, that is fixed tax on each ticket issued. Row 4. Add valorem tax. This is a tax that is based on the value of a transaction or of property and will increase in proportion to the value of the transaction or of property. For example, sales tax. This tax is imposed on sale of goods and services. Income tax. This tax is levied on both earned income, salaries and unearned income, rent or dividend. Page 61 The last row indicates proportional tax. The tax rate is fixed without considering the total income or wealth. 4.1.3 Government Expenditure Government expenditure is of two types, revenue expenditure and capital expenditure. Both of them are further classified into plan and non-plan expenditure. The classification is depicted in figure 4.5. Plan expenditure is provided for working on the areas considered under the five-year plan of the central government. On the other hand, non-plan expenditure is not provided for working under the five-year plan, but it pertains to the more routine activities of the government. Figure 4.5 Government Expenditure Here we have a flowchart. The first head in this flowchart is Government Expenditure. This is divided into two branches. The first branch is Revenue Expenditure and the second one is Capital Expenditure. Revenue Expenditure is further divided into two sub-branches Plan Expenditure and Non-Plan Expenditure. Capital expenditure, on the other hand, is also divided into two sub-branches, plan expenditure and non-plan expenditure. Revenue expenditures are incurred for the purposes other than the creation of physical or financial assets of the central government. They refer to the flow or current transactions of the government in any year. For example, wages and salaries of government employees interest payments on debt incurred by the central government, grants made to state governments, transfers and subsidies to firms and households, etc. It is further categorized as plan and non-plan revenue expenditure. Capital expenditures are incurred in the process of creation of physical or financial assets or the reduction of financial liabilities. They refer to transactions in stock variables. Page 62 For example, expenditures incurred on the acquisition of land, the construction of new buildings, the purchase or sale of shares of public sector enterprises or loans made to state governments, etc. Like revenue expenditure, capital expenditure is also further categorized into plan and non-plan Capital Expenditure 4.1.4 Government Budget This is an annual statement of the government's estimated revenues and expenditures. Since the government uses taxes as well as expenditures to influence the economy, the budget also reflects the government policy. The budget is divided into two parts, the revenue account and the capital account. The revenue account records all the flow transactions of the government, that is, those transactions that do not change the physical or financial assets of the government. The capital account records all the stock transactions of the government, that is, those transactions that do affect the physical or financial assets of the government. Figure 4.6 outlines the basic structure of the budget. Figure 4.6 Government Budget This flowchart presents how the government budget may be broken up. The first label, Government Budget, is bifurcated into two sub-branches, 
revenue account and capital account. Revenue account has two further sub-branches, revenue receipts and revenue expenditures. Revenue receipts can be further broken into the sub-branches, tax revenues and non-tax revenues. Revenue expenditures can be broken into the further sub-branches, plan revenue expenditures, non-plan revenue expenditures. Capital account, on the other hand, can be represented through two sub-branches, capital receipts and capital expenditures. Capital receipts are trifurcated into the sub-branches, recovery of loans, disinvestments, borrowings and other liabilities. Capital expenditures are further subdivided into two sub-branches, plan capital expenditures, non-plan capital expenditures. Table 4.3 shows a summary statement of the government's revenues and expenditures which has been cited from the Economic Survey 2014. The table records the government's revenue receipts, item 1, and revenue expenditures, item 2, as well as the government's capital receipts, item 4, and capital expenditures, item 5. The table also lists the important sub-items under each item. The figures mentioned are taken as a percentage of national income, that is GDP, and not in absolute amounts because this gives us a better idea about the relative magnitudes involved. Page 63 Table 4.3 Receipts and Expenditures of the Central Government The table, as has been discussed earlier, describes the items as well as the percentage of GDP. The three columns list the items, their description and the percentage of GDP in this order. Row 1, Item 1 Revenue Receipts 1A plus 1B is 9.3% of GDP. Row 2, 1A Tax Revenue that is net of state's share is 7.7% of GDP. Row 3, Item 1B Non-tax Revenue is 1.6% of GDP. Row 4 indicates item 2, that is, revenue expenditures, which is 12.8% of GDP. Row 5, item 2A, interest payments, 3.2% of GDP. Row 6, item 2B, major subsidies, 1.8% of GDP. Row 7, Item 2C, Defence Expenditure, which is 1.1% of GDP. Row 8 represents Item 3, Revenue Deficits, which is 1 minus 2, and that is 3.5% of GDP. Row 9 represents Item 4, Capital Receipts, which is 2A plus 2B plus 2C, and that is 5.5% of GDP. Row 10, item 4A, recovery of loans, which is 0.1% of GDP. Row 11, item 4B, other receipts, which is 0.3% of GDP. Row 12, item 4C, borrowings and other liabilities, which is 5.1% of GDP. Row 13 is item 5, Capital expenditures, which is 2.0% of GDP. Row 14 is item 6, which is non-debt receipts. And that is 1 plus 4A plus 4B, which is 9.7% of GDP. Row 15 is item 7, total expenditures, which is 2 plus 5. And this is 14.9% of GDP. Row 16 is item 8, fiscal deficits, which is 7 minus 6, and that is 5.1% of GDP. Row 17 is item 9, primary deficits, which is 8 minus 2A, and that is 1.9% of GDP. Any economic agent can only spend what she or he have. In principle, the sum of her expenditures must equal the sum of receipts. If an individual's income is less than her expenditure, she will have to borrow. Governments are in a slightly different position because they can 
create money to cover expenditures. Item 6 in the table that we just discussed, that is the non-debt receipt, is the revenue receipt of the government as well as capital receipt which includes loan recovery and other receipts excluding the borrowings. If the government's total expenditure, as indicated in item 7 in the table that we just discussed, is more than the non-debt receipts, which is item 6 from the table, then there exists a deficit. The government has two options for financing this deficit. It can borrow from banks and the general public. The other option is to create money. This is called deficit financing. 4.1.5 Measures of Government Deficit The budget reports various types of deficits. A deficit is the difference between expenditure and receipt. These deficits have been described in Table 4.4. Table 4.4 Types of Deficits In this table, we have three rows and two columns. The first column tells us about the name of the deficit and the second column describes us the deficit in detail. Row 1 Revenue Deficit or RD This is the difference between the revenue receipts or RR and revenue expenditures or RE. It reflects the amount of revenue that the government is falling short of. Revenue deficit is equal to revenue receipts minus revenue expenditures. Page 64 Row 2 Fiscal Deficit or FD This is the difference between the total expenditure or TE or revenue and capital expenditure together and the sum of revenue receipts and non-debt receipts or NDR of the government. It reflects what the government must borrow to balance its budget and it becomes equal to the borrowings and other liabilities or B and L. Fiscal deficit is equal to total expenditure minus bracket open revenue receipts plus non-debt receipts bracket close which is equal to borrowings and other liabilities. Row 3 Primary Deficit or PD This is the difference between the Fiscal Deficit or FD and the Interest Payments on Debt or INT. The expenditure on interest on past debt is an unavoidable part of the government's expenditure. The primary deficit reflects how much the government is adding to its debt burden in each year. Primary deficit is equal to Fiscal Deficit minus interest payments on debt. 4.1.6 Implications of Deficits Fiscal Deficit A high fiscal deficit means that the government needs to increase its borrowings from one or more of the following. 1. The central bank of the country. This may result in increased money supply and adds to the inflation. 2. Domestic borrowings from the public. This displaces private investment and it also adds to the interest burden, leaving fewer resources to make developmental expenditures. 3. The rest of the world. This may create adverse balance of payments because it will increase the amount of foreign currency needed for paying the interest on foreign borrowings and also for repaying the foreign loans. It may also increase the country's vulnerability to international pressures. Any increase in borrowing adds to the interest payments that the government has to make in the future, leaving less resources available for future governments to spend. Alternatively, if the government cuts back on expenditure, especially on development expenditure today, economic development may slow down, leaving future generations with less GDP. Revenue Deficit A high revenue deficit means that the government is spending more than it is raising in the form of revenue. 1. A very high revenue deficit will add to the government's fiscal deficit and to its borrowings. Page 65 2. Many of the government's expenditures cannot be cut down easily. For example, 
wages, salaries and defence. The government may therefore be forced to cut back on expenditures such as health and education, which are welfare expenditures, so as to reduce the revenue deficit. Otherwise, it will have to raise taxes. Neither is an easy option. Test your understanding. 1. Categorize the following items as revenue receipts or capital receipts. Point 1. Borrowings from public. Point 2. Profits of public sector undertakings. Point 3. Receipts from sale of shares of PSUs. Point 4. Recovery of loans. Point 5. Foreign aid against earthquake victims. 2. Categorize the following items as revenue expenditure or capital expenditure. Point 1. Loan given to union territories. Point 2. Interest paid on national debt. Point 3. Pension paid to retired government employees. Point 4. Repayment of loan taken from the World Bank. Point 5. Grants given by central government to state governments. You were just listening to this chapter. Subject Coordinator Dr. Jaya Singh. Production Assistant Jagbandhu Jana. Sound Recordist Batilang Lindo and Vikas Sangwan. Artists Anandana Kapoor and Akash Ahuja. Produced by Vimlesh Chaudhary. And presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India. Mm-hmm.